All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is print out the tracer. I have it in an eight by 10, a 12 by 16, and a 24 by 30. And print it out and tape it together. <clears throat> I try to tape it so that it's only one layer thick. Um, although right here it is two layers thick, but you know, trim it out as best you can. And what I wanna point out too is that um, Basically, I don't, know, I don't know how to explain it, but the image, let me show you on the big one. The image, um, if you trim it and then put it right against the one next to it, it won't line up. You have to kind of leave it spaced um, a little bit. I don't know how else to explain that. It's kind of kind of weird. The image goes right up to the very edge and sometimes when you print it, it won't show up on your printout. It'll be a white line, but you should still butt up the edge of the papers with each other and the lines will line up. I, I think that explains it. Anyway, so you wanna tape it together um, and I usually tape it really well so that I can reuse it. I tape it um, initially a little bit on the front and then I tape it on the back in several spaces so that this is easy to fold and reuse. Um, now what I'm gonna do today for our demo is I'm going to demo on this paper, which I have put two layers of gesso on. So this is my, uh, it's just sketchbook paper by Strathmore. It's a 14 by 17 inch pad. This is obviously the 12 by 16 tracer that I used. And I love Richeson, R-I-C-H-E-S-O-N graphite Paper. I buy the whole roll from Dick Blick. It is the best. Don't waste your time on anything else. That's what I use. And I also use a stylus, also known as a nail dotter. You can get these at Sally's or Amazon. I also use a kneaded eraser. And um, I'm going to clean up the lines after I ink it. So to ink it, you need to use a, um, I'm using a, a half inch, a 0.5, I mean, permanent waterproof fine liner. You know, this is by Derwent, a British company, or you could use Micron or whatever your favorite one is. Make sure it says archival permanent waterproof so that it won't um, bleed. And um, so I traced my design first, then I um, <clears throat> inked it. And this will uh, smear if you're not careful. I smeared it in a couple of places and you know, you know, no big deal. So just be careful that you don't smear it. And then I erased and went around with my kneaded eraser. You can roll it to lift up excess graphite that might've gotten on there. Or you can also, you know, rub it across like this. It will lighten all the ink lines a little bit, but that's okay. I decided to ink in her eyebrows and her mouth. We're gonna paint over that, it's gonna look lighter. It'll be fine. Um, and uh, what I wanted to talk about now, I wanna really just explain the importance of how lines, the edges of lines and the inside lines need to line up with each other So, and how to avoid tangents. So let me just kind of point out a couple of examples. So like right here, this star, starfish shell. Um, initially, when I drew it, it was like this, like if this is her, her shell, her shell bra. And I had the starfish on here. And you don't want to end the, the, the line of the starfish arm on one of these lines. You want to come over a little bit more to avoid that tangent. So see what I just did? I pulled it out a little bit longer so that it overlaps. It, it kind of tells your brain this is in front of the bra shell. Okay, so that's important. This, that's to avoid tangents. Because if you were to put it if you were to put it right on the end, let me do another one where we don't do that. Like even the top, if I were to put this right on the end, 
you can't really tell that one that's in front. So this is a no-no. All right, so that's tangents. The other thing I wanna talk about is, so this painting is all about lines. So it's really important that the edges of the lines line up with the interior lines. So all I mean by that is, uh, let's see, let's take, um, I don't know, let's take this for example. So, you know, here's her hip and here's this, um, it's, this is to kind of give her more movement. And um, so this, this thing comes out like this, right? So it's gonna be kind of transparent and we're gonna probably put glass over that, like clear glass. And then this one lines up there, comes across and does a swoop and kind of goes in like that, the next line, something like that. All of these lines are gonna kind of do the same thing. So they're, it's, it's really important that they curve in like that, okay? Um, then we've got one that kind of comes over and comes down. So you need to kind of pretend draw through here and do that. So that really looks like it's connected. So sometimes I'll actually pretend I'm drawing it and then I'll draw it. Then it comes around and kind of does this thing and this thing, right? So these are gonna continue with those swooping lines that go this way. And same thing with this. So they all are helping to describe that shape. This exterior line is lining up with this line. So what I'm saying is, if you go to trace this, don't do this. I've seen people do this, <laughs> even when I give tracers. So here's her hip. Here's this thing, right? Let's say you decide you're gonna trace the outline of the shape, you know, first. Like that. And then later you come back in and do the lines like this. I mean, it just doesn't, it's just not right. See the difference between these two? This line needs to line up with that corner right there. I mean, I, can't, I know it's kind of detail-y and you probably know this anyway, but um, there's a lot of that in this painting, so that's why I'm pointing it out. Make sure that your um, interior line really does line up with the exterior shape. And that's it. That's gonna make a huge difference if you do that, if you avoid the tangents and make sure that your lines really work together.